All right, man, Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Hope you had yourself a good sleep last night. This is Torture Talk. If you're new here, you know what time it is. Now, you actually don't know what time it is, but today we're going to be talking about Drake actually speaking about fake friends. And um, we all thought he was unbothered. At least that's what people were saying. But um, yeah, we're going to get into that. Watch a clip. Before I get into that, this is Torture Talk. If you're new here, this is the 8 a.m. show, actually. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen. Cash app, PayPal's in the description. They call me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000 and a million by Monday morning. Yeah, man. So uh, let me know where you're from, too. So we're going to get into this clip, man. Um, and we'll be back to discuss. All right. This comes courtesy <laughs> of Chief Smooth. I look like the fucking Unabomber. <laughs> nah, I look like uh one of those uh one of those uh wanted Jones the the art descriptions like just tell me what he look like and then they they draw him out. That's a <laughs> look like a fucking bandit. <laughs> oh man, good morning to y'all, man. Look, let's get to the video, man. <laughs> Unabomber watching your shit for a while bro. i just subscribed to your shit too bro oh man this is what we're still doing over a rap beef that happened months ago sometimes you just gotta take your l and move on now drake was at a party in toronto last night at some point during the show drake got very emotional and got on the mic to give a speech now keep in mind ever since the beef happened we've only been hearing about how drake feels from academics and mall and from what we hear, Drake is unbothered. It was only about two months ago when his producer, Gordo, said Drake has been... Yes. Yes. People been saying that. That this doodle ball has been unbothered. And we all knew that that was a front because he's always been emotional. So what does it look like? Him being unbothered. Like he he's always been that guy who's always been bothered. You could listen to his music and tell that he's always been bothered. I ain't believe that for a second. And I know y'all didn't either. But let's keep going. Happy as shit during the feud. He said ever since this all happened, I've seen him happier. But the speech he delivered at the party last night seems to tell a whole different story. Here's what Drake said. Yeah. Um Listen, I'm going to tell you one thing about nostalgia. One thing about nostalgia this party here. My real friends are definitely in the building. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to come to a point in life where people you thought were friends or people you thought were close to you, they might switch up. They might try and move funny with you. They might stab you in the back. They might do a lot of things to you. You'll come to that realization. Wherever you're at in life, you've probably been there and you'll be there again. That's how life is. But look, sometimes it's you and you alone by yourself. Sometimes it's you alone with your thoughts. Sometimes, you, you know what? Play the song, go ahead. No, I'm not a therapist. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Listen, man. <laughs> Yo, sometimes you don't mean to laugh, but it's just something inside you that just like... It just pushed that motherfucker up. <laughs> Push him right out. <laughs> Push that motherfucker right out, man. I don't be wanting to laugh sometimes, but I can't help it. The shit just. <laughs> nigga. Like for real. It's like, okay, so what are we doing here? You was unbothered. You know what I'm saying? Like, see, the thing is, when you, the thing is with Drake, Drake Drake wanted to play the villain so bad, and he's too emotional to play the villain. See, if, villains are usually emotional. They don't have no emotion. You know what I'm saying? Or they, they, they cope with something else. But him, he tries to play the villain, but he's not. He's that, he's, 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 a, he's, 
how would I say this? Who would Derek be if I had to pick a comic book character? Who would he be? He would be like, oh, he'd be like the Sandman. You know what I'm saying? An emotional wreck. That's what he would be. That's something like that. You know what I'm saying? But he definitely can't be a hero and he can't be a villain. You know what I'm saying? Even though the Sandman was a villain, but he can't be really a villain. I don't know why people say he's Thanos. I never understand that. How can this nigga be Thanos? Like how you how you how you saying Drake's Thanos? Drake? <laughs> Come on, man. A lot of y'all, y'all watch comic book movies, you know, and um y'all don't really know too much about comic books. <laughs> y'all would know that Thanos is he really ain't that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, with the infinity gauntlet he is, but anybody with the infinity gauntlet is that guy. But he got beat so many times. You know what I'm saying? But that's another story for another day. And he's he's a copy of Dark Seed. So, if you know anything about Dark Side, yeah, that's the real Thanos. <laughs> and that's Kendrick. Kendrick is Dark Side. Drake is Thanos. <laughs> but I'm just saying, man. Kendrick really is Dark Side, <laughs> to be honest with y'all. He really is. He really is dark side. Um, but the thing is, Drake's always been emotional. And I think that he, I think that he thought that all these dudes was his friends. Now, this might be more of a, more of a shot at Cole than anybody. I think he's more talking about J. Cole. Cause I don't think he, cause I think J. Cole was the one that really hit him hard. I think that was, that's the one that really, really, uh, polished his button. You know what I mean? Ruffled his feathers. That's the one that really bothered him because he really thought that they were close. Now, he could be thinking that J. Cole has an issue with him, but I still don't think J. Cole has an issue with Drake. I don't. I mean, I think J. Cole just did a couple of songs with people that he just don't fuck with, but I don't think he has an issue with Drake. You know what I'm saying? And my thing is, this is how this is how you know a lot of these dudes are so they they so soft and they're frauds. It's like you all you niggas got the y'all numbers. Y'all could just get on the phone and talk to each other. And I think some of y'all be wanting this because y'all be wanting to have this. You spin this into something where you can make a record and make money off of it. I think that's what most of these dudes want to do. Maybe not J. Cole, maybe not Kanye, but the rest of these dudes probably want to do that. Out of this list here. I don't think Kendrick's like that at all, but let's keep it going. But that does not sound to me like somebody that's happy. That sounds to me like somebody that's still in shock at what happened, still trying to process and also come to terms with people turning his back on him. Now, it also didn't help the narrative of Drake being unbothered when Drake was recorded going this hard for many men by 50 Cent. Baby. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, man, but I've seen this sympathy play before. You got into a beef that you thought you would win easily. You actually ended up losing that beef and people that had issues with you prior also came out and support against you. So now you're acting like everybody magically turned their backs on you. And keep in mind, Drake has been in this industry damn near 15 plus years. You know damn well there's no such thing as friends in the industry. You've even made... I mean, I don't really know about that. I won't go that far and say that there's no friends in the industry because I do believe that there's people who make friends like Red Man and Method Man, they're friends. You know what I'm saying? There's people who make friends in the industry and they become really good friends and stay friends. I think that Drake is just a fake dude. And a lot of people was putting up with him because he was successful. It's like that guy that's in a company and you know he's not real. He's fake. He moves like a fake dude. He does fake things. And you, you know, see that and you from the streets so are you real and you just put up with it because you have no choice because you work with the dude or you want to advance in the company. And that's why I say 
a lot of these people, they may have pretended to be Drake's friend, but they really wasn't Drake's friend. And he knows that now. And I think that he's learning a valuable lesson about life because I think he, he, he was a dude that was on the pedestal. He felt like he was untouchable. No one could do anything to me. I'm Drake. I'm that guy. I'm the boy. I'm the kid. I'm the whoever. And there's nothing nobody could do to me. And Kendrick brought him back to reality. And this is what people got to understand. And I'm going to say this again. I'm going to keep saying this. No one's bigger than the culture. The culture is what puts you there. No one's bigger than that. If you disrespect the culture, it will come for you. And it will get you out of here. It goes for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm seeing the other ball, the uh, million dollar baby ball saying he's not a he's not a hip hop artist now. So the coach is coming for him. Post Malone. The coach is coming. Post Malone could never come back to the coach. Because he disrespected the coach. And I think that that's what happened with Drake. Now, don't get me wrong. Drake is a special type of type of dude because he has a loyal fan base. But his loyal fan base is only as loyal to him as it, it, to his music. They don't, they're not loyal to him. You know what I'm saying? They're not. Because if Drake was on stage, and let's say last night Drake was on stage when he was on stage. Let's say he said, you know what? And he brought Kendrick Lamar out. Nobody wouldn't boo. They would cheer. Because they don't, they don't, people are not friends with Drake. They don't, they're not into him. You know what I'm saying? They just like his music. They don't like him as a person because he's a corny dude. He's a corny dude. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that to, to, you know, humiliate the man. I'm just saying, like, if you look at his videos and you look at how he moves and you look at how he dance and you look at all the things he do. He's a corny dude. He's corny. You ever seen a dude and you'd be like, man, that nigga corny as shit. Dude with money or dude that got clout and he's just corny. That's him. He just does corny shit for, for attention. He's just like, oh, check this out. What you think about this? And he do something corny and you, you supposed to, you, you supposed to be close to him. You'd be like, oh, that was cool, bro. And in the back of your head, you're like, that's nigga corny. That's him. Plenty of rap songs about it. And I don't want to shit on the message because it's actually a good message. But at this point in time, this should not be coming from Drake. I personally don't think Drake was shocked or surprised by any of those guys that came out against him during the beef. And also mind you, this guy was an actor. He knows exactly what to say, when to say it to elicit emotion from people. This is damn near manipulation at this point. Whether it's ASAP Rocky, The Weeknd, J. Cole, even Kanye West. Drake has had personal issues with these guys, so I don't know why he's surprised. Once again, right message, wrong messenger. You guys get in the comments below. What do you guys think about Drake calling out fake friends? Post your comments below. Scratch my channel like this video. I'll see you guys later, man. Yeah. Um, listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing about nostalgia. One thing about nostalgia, this party here. My real friends are definitely in the building. But I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna come to a point in life where people you thought were friends or people you thought were close to you, they might switch up. They might try and move funny with you. They might stab you in the back. They might do a lot of things to you. You'll come to that realization. Wherever you're at in life, you've probably been there and you'll be there again. That's how life is. But look, sometimes it's you and you alone by yourself. Sometimes it's you alone with your thoughts. Sometimes, you, you know what? Play the song, go ahead. Yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt, man. He's hurt. This this battle took a toll on him. That right there, I, 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 I can't wait to see what academics say. I can't wait to see what Adam 22 say. Can't wait to see what these dudes say. That was a weak move that he just did. You would never, ever see Kendrick Lamar do something like that. Ever. You would never see him come out and say something like that. And this is the reason why he's levels above these dudes. You know what I'm saying? Because no disrespect to J. Cole, but he sh these dudes, they, they, they have their feelings on their shoulders, man. And they put it out there. 
And I don't know if they do it just for, because that's how they really feel. But you know, they always say, light skinned niggas is emotional. (laughs) I had to do it. I'm sorry. (laughs) Dark skinned niggas is back, nigga. (laughs) Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all my light skinned brothers. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, I had to do it. I had to do it though. Dark skinned niggas is back, man. You know what it is. But look, man, um, it's just crazy to me that, you know, they, they, they Drake Cole emotional. Ken, uh, 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 Drake emotional. And Kendrick ain't show no emotions. Kendrick is cool as a fan, he ain't say nothing. <laughs> Yo, it's so crazy how Kendrick hasn't said nothing. I think that that I think the silence is so scary to a lot of these dudes that they just don't know what to do. And I think he just Kendrick is so good at that. He's so good at like just being quiet. Like, okay, I got you. I'm just yeah, I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just gonna kill you. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. I'm just, I'm just gonna smoke you. That's it. So I don't know, man. But yeah, he's hurt, man. Drake's hurt. I think Drake. I think Drake. Drake has a long way to go. Um, and I think he still hasn't grown up because he was raised by his mom, and and, and I don't, I don't know his mom, and I don't know how good his mom was to him, but I can tell that that. He never really had a, a, a father figure or a role model in his life to teach him. Drake is still running around like a teenager. If you never, ever, ever, ever knew Drake, if no one ever knew Drake, like if you never knew him and you talked to him, you would have thought he was in his 20s. You wouldn't even know he's almost 40 years old. Like three years from now, Drake could be 40. October 24th, I believe, is his birthday. He will be 40 years old in three years. And you would have never thought that if you was just to talk to him regularly. Because he doesn't carry himself like a man. He carries himself like a boy. He still does things that a teenager or a young man would do. You know what I'm saying? He's still doing things like that. He's still attending and doing things that young men would do. He hasn't grown up. And it reflects in his music. He hasn't grown up. He's been he's been t- talking about the same subject matter for the last four or five albums. Well, most of his albums are the same subject matter, but we accepted it after a while. But I will say that some of the things he say is important to people who go through stuff like that. But 90% of the time, if you're talking about models and you're having sex with models, nobody's going through that because that's only something he's going through. You know what I'm saying? Emotional, the emotional side of it, maybe, but He's going through that, but he hasn't grown. It's reflected in his music. It's reflected in his behavior. Him doing that, that's a cry for help because he's alone. He said, oh, I know what my real friends is at. Then if you know what your real friends is at, you wouldn't even have to say something like that. But you wanted to let everybody know that, yeah, uh, I'm not messing with them dudes no more. And this comes after you have unfollowed everybody. Follow and follow LeBron James, Joe Buttons, and, and, and uh, uh, who is it? Um, a bunch of people you unfollowed. Kendrick, you follow, was following both Kendrick pages. You unfollowed Kendrick. You should have been did that. <laughs> I don't know why you was following Kendrick. Maybe he was looking for something. He only has one picture up there. What are you looking for? <laughs> but either way, man, I kind of feel bad in a way because I think that. He couldn't avoid. He could have avoided all this, and I hate to see. Even though I, even though I talk a lot of junk on Drake, I hate to see him fall like that, because I, because in the spirit of competition, I wanted to see a, a competitive matchup between the two. And he just got smoked. He got steamrolled, and it didn't even look fair. People could say whatever they want, but that didn't even look fair. He got one song versus four, and he just got he just got annihilated. No way around it. He got annihilated. Y'all could try to dance around in this. Oh, wait, he, that second verse in Family Matters, like, uh, nobody cares. He got annihilated. 
And I think that he could have made it a better battle if he wasn't so arrogant about it. See, when you win, when you winning all the time, and then somebody you jump in that ring with somebody that hit you, you never been hit that hard before. You've been knocking people out, been hitting people. You got you got you got knocked down, and you got up and you you fought back. But this time, you fought some dude. You that you underestimated and he rocked your snot box. You know what I'm saying? He put your snot box on, on, on a shuffle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That John was repeating all types of different things. He smoked you and that's what happens. So I think he can learn from this though. And um, maybe he could be a better man because that's what it's all about. It's all about being a better person, a better man. Me personally, I don't think that Drake is ever going to learn because he hasn't been taught the fundamentals of being a man. And whoever's around him, they all kids too. They have they have the, the mentality of children. You still you still running with dudes who talking about street street shit and and uh, doing street things and doing things to people. They haven't grown either. They're in their forties too, still talking about street stuff. So when you're dealing with stuff like that, this is what happens. So, you know, but either way, man, Drake apologized. Well, he, he ain't apologizing. He ain't getting rid of everybody. <laughs> He's starting over. <laughs> but hey, man. All right, man, 12 o'clock show will be coming up. See y'all. Peace. Bye. Have a good morning, everybody. All right, peace. peace. <laughs>